So as long as it's fair, as long as it's voluntary, inequality is fine. Inequality is great. We want those who succeed to be more rewarded than those who destroy value. But in the sense of our current environment, we have really sinister inequality. If everybody, you know, if, if the water's flowing and everyone is benefiting, right, everyone's cup is filled, um, people are happy, right? They have better things to do than to line up outside of someone's house and threaten to chop their head off. You know, I, I don't think we should be setting up guillotines anywhere. And that's, that's why I love Bitcoin. It's the peaceful revolution, right? Um, but why do people want to set up these guillotines? Because they know the system isn't working. Um, it's not working for them. And despite, you know, working very hard at, um, at many jobs and climbing the ladders, it's still, uh, you know, the, the prospects for retirement, uh, even even the ability to afford a home today is, is just, it, it, it's, it's outside of the reach of so many very hardworking Americans. The system's not serving them. Uh, this, the system stratifies wealth uh, through asset inflation and, uh, and disproportionate access to, to assets. Welcome to the Tucson Blockchain Podcast. My name is Alex, and today I have on Jake Hanrahan from Popular Front. Jake is an independent journalist who believes in media integrity and is entirely supported by the community that he's built on Patreon. He has some of the best YouTube documentaries when it comes to conflict in other countries, and I really, really enjoyed this conversation. And we're recording. Welcome to the podcast, Jake. Uh, Jake Hanrahan. Thank you very much. Jake Hanrahan is a uh, independent journalist who covers conflict all over the world and is one of my favorite uh, people to kind of refer to if I want to know what's happening. Um, I uh, stumbled across you on the What Bitcoin Did podcast. Um, oh, yeah, we Peter. Yeah, good guy. Yeah. And uh, have been following you ever since. And uh, um, supporting you on Patreon because I just think independent journalism is so important, especially today where nobody knows what's real or not. So, yeah. So, uh, what yeah. what is, what inspired you to get into journalism? What inspired me? Um, fuck, man. It wasn't. I don't know if I was like inspired as such. It was like. I don't know. I was, I got no qualifications or anything. Like I fucked up school, but I was always reading. Like my granddad always told me, like he told me this story when he, he moved to England from uh, Ireland. And he said like, all he did was like work and just fucking get books out of the library and read them and read them. And he's like one of the smartest guys I know, you know, like, and he, he's a very smart guy. Um, he was a carpenter, but he, he's like, I don't know, like you wouldn't, you would think he's been to like, you know, universities and all this mad stuff. He's very clever, very well informed. Um, so I was like, always just thinking, I want to be like that. You know, I want to be smart like my granddad and know about the world. And yeah, man, I, I guess I just would, I would always read. So I got good at writing. Like I, I primarily, when I first started, I was a print journalist and I, I don't know if anything inspired me, but I just, you know, I was doing shit jobs, um, working, like, just, I mean, I, everyone's got to do it. But for me, that was shit, like, laboring, call center, crap like that. And I hated it. And I was like, i got to get out of this, man. Like, I've got to get out of just doing this because it just wasn't for me, you know. So I was like, what am I good at? English, writing, that was the only thing I was good at in school. So I, I thought, like, a guy like me can't really be a journalist because just the kind of area I'm from, it's not the sort of thing people do, you know what I mean? It's just you, you kind of get a trade or you work in a warehouse or, like, people end up in crime. You know, it's just kind of just just dead area. Like, nothing is going on. Nothing good is going on. Um, so I was like, no, I don't think I can do that. But then I started reading books by, like, other journalists, like, really good books like uh about war reporting like i read um dispatches i read generation kill i read uh dexter filkins forever war i read um unreasonable behavior by don mccullin and i was like man these guys are like not the people on the news right these are not like you know suit and tie and all that bullshit these are like proper guys doing real shit so i was like fuck it why not i'll try 
Um, and then I started like pitching articles. I, I started talking to some people. I started writing here and there and getting a few articles published. And yeah, man, eventually it worked. Got in with Vice, started documentaries and, you know, it's all been going all right ever since, man. Sure. Yeah, Generation Kill is one of my favorites as well. It's just done so differently. Oh, yeah, and I, I, yeah uh, that style, um, Evan Wright is like one of my favorite, probably my favorite writer. And that style of just not being pretentious, but also being serious, I loved it. You know, like he's like, here's the fucking war, but he's not like doing a thousand yard stare and he's not bragging about how fucking brave he is. He's like, I was scared as shit. And the recruits were often scared and then they did this. And, you know, like the real gnarly details, mm -hmm. which isn't necessarily what you would see on traditional news for me are actually more enlightening often, you know, especially when I've been to frontline stuff. A lot of it is like, wow, that thing that that guy said on the front line is way more important than anything any analyst I've ever heard say. Not that there's anything wrong with analysts. It's just the way I process the info, the kind of journalist I am, I guess. I was like, yeah, I like, I like being there. It, it, I think you really learn something that you can't otherwise. So, yeah, I think Generation Kill is really a big part of that for me. Yeah, much different perspective on war, definitely. Uh, yeah. So why, why did you end up leaving Vice and uh, starting your own venture? Um, I think my time at Vice just ran, it, ran its course. You know, like I had the best time of my life at Vice. Um, you know, I started there when I was 24, uh, just turned 24. And like I left when I was like 28 or some shit. And it was just like the best time. I, I can't even explain to you. One day I want to write about it because it was just incredible. Like I Vice, you know, I talk a lot of shit on Vice now, but honestly, like Vice, oh, like gave me my life. You know, it gave not gave me my life as in like who I am, but it. Well, yeah, I guess in a way. But it just gave me like, I mean, man, I, I'd barely been out of the country before I started working at Vice, and the only time I had been out of the country was for like family holidays to like Spain and Spain. You know what I mean? It was like shit, man. So. I went to, you know, I went to all these places, travel all over the world, just met people I would have never met. It was just so good. And also the environment in the office was just incredible. You know, like I loved it. There's a lot of people now I see chatting shit about the environment, the office, but at the time they fucking loved it too. Um, you know, it's a very stressful world. You know, it's dog eat dog there. It was like brutal, but if you could roll with it, you, you know, it was amazing. Very high energy or whatever you would say um but then you know our, our like little news team at the uk we made something like 80 percent of the the vice news stuff you know i was always news i was never interested in like all the you know dot com we used to call it you know like this dildo works here but like cool whatever i don't care but we did we you know we did just did news and we did it really well and we did all of this content and then like hbo bought vice out or vice news out you know bought the concept bought the the vertical i think they call it and then the, this amazing boss we had, Kevin Sutcliffe, he was moved out of his position. And then a guy from the BBC who didn't know his ass from his elbow, never been to conflict, never really been in the field. He came in, he was very rude. One of the first things he said, I'll never forget, he said, um, uh, any work you did before I arrived is not relevant. It's not important, you know? And this was like, what, two years after I'd been out of prison, you know? Like I'd been in fucking jail filming for Vice. So I was like, fuck you, man. That really was raw for me. So I just thought, yeah, this isn't going well. Long story short, he said, you're unmanageable. I said, you know, because I would always, I got big mouth, man. And like, I kind of regret some of the stuff I would kick off about. But I do think that if you're going to be honest in the field, as a journalist, as you should be, you should be honest in the office. And everyone was moaning. And then they would say nothing to this guy. They would just like suck his dick, like not literally, but you know what I mean? They would just be like kissing his ass and like bitching about him behind his back. And I was like, fuck this guy, I'm just gonna tell him. And then I had a row with a guy in the US, the head in the US news. And I think everyone just got to the point where like, like Jake's just an asshole, like he won't shut up, like he's a pain, which is, I understand, like you can't have someone like that on board. But I was like, fuck it, I'm ready to go. Um, and they kind of said, look, you know, we're gonna give you some money to leave if you wanna leave. And I was like, I don't wanna be here anymore. So yeah, let's go. So I left. But I, I kind of left on good terms, actually. You know, I kind of said to them, I, I didn't really apologize. But I was like, look, man, you have to see it from my point of view. This is how I've been. This is what I've been doing. Had the most amazing years of my life, risking my life, like, on an unbelievable scale. And then suddenly this guy tells me, like, 
you know, not just me, my team, like decimated our team. They started firing everyone and we're just like, yeah, like none of your work's important. Then these Yanks, no offense, but then the US office were telling us how to do our job. And, you know, I was like, absolutely not. That's not happening. So yeah, it just kind of, it kind of fell apart like that for me, but we left on good terms. I did a lot of freelance stuff for them still um, now and then, but it got to a point where they started doing some shady stuff with their news. I felt like they were being dishonest and stupid move by me actually, but I couldn't help myself. I was on Twitter and that being like, this is bullshit. Why have they done this? I mean, it wasn't just me. It was often for other people. Like there were people on my team where like, you know, they deleted their work from the old website and stuff. And I kicked off about that. And, and anyway, let's just say that that uh, revenue stream dried up, <laughs> you know, they didn't want to send me anywhere anymore for freelancing because I was a gobshite. Um, and then yeah, man, and then that's what happened. Um, I guess then I, I started doing like a bit of freelance work here and there I was doing bits for the Guardian, bits for BBC News, Frontline, Pro, Publica. And then I was like, fuck this man, the industry is just full of like maniacs. I, I just, I love journalism, but the industry bothers me. There's a problem with it in my opinion, which is just a bore, it's boring to go into, but it's just something I'm constantly, you know, coming up against like this. And, and I was like, fuck it, man, I'm either gonna quit or I'm gonna start my own thing and see if that works. If that works, then I'll roll with that. If not, I'm quitting, I'm gonna go and do something else. Um, I don't know what bank robbery, maybe <laughs> like, I'm not good at anything, but fuck knows. I was, I was thinking about doing something else and luckily, yeah. So I started popular front and, and when I started it, like that's my platform. Now anyone that doesn't know it's like grassroots conflict journalism organization. We do documentaries, the podcast articles, all sorts. And I started it and I wanted to remove some of the problems that I'd seen with my experiences at vice and within the industry. So venture capital, you know, I've had a lot of people be like, hey, we'll give you this much money. And then, you know, that will help you build your team. And then you owe us this. It's like, no, nah, I'm not owing anyone anything. I don't want anyone dictating what I make. I don't want targets. Um, so I decided to do it all kind of anti-capitalist in a way. I would say anti-corporate more, more, more accurately, where I just refuse. We don't have any money coming in from like dodgy fucking industry people, you know. So Popular Front is grassroots. It's run by the Patreon um, and it's run by merch sales. That's it, man. Now and then we get like a donation from someone, but it's never more than like $200 or whatever, but it all helps. You know, it's, it's definitely amazing to do it this way. And it's not great in terms of business perhaps, but I, you know, I think we respected in a very short amount of time. People trust what we're doing and they know that we're going to come with an, a kind of authentic voice. I feel there's no, you know, the the kind of, catchphrase of popular front has always been no frills no elitism you know we're not having any fancy bullshit that gets in the way of the reporting and we're certainly not having any like industry elitism vibes there is no you're lower you're higher there is none of that i don't want any of that anyone can know about something i don't care where they're from you know it's not about that um which in the early days of vice news it was like that it was amazing the stuff i was getting to do within six months of working for vice news was the sort of stuff you'd spend five six years trying to do at bbc or cnn or anywhere you know like the opportunities were incredible so i kind of wanted to take that ethos obviously we don't have money but you know it's it's going well man and and i'm glad you know i'm glad you reached out i'm glad you like it and a lot of other people do so it's it's you know it's moving let's say yeah yeah i think one of the one of the reasons why i uh decided to support you on patreon is i i find it really uh fascinating and important to follow what's happening around the world and uh i grew up in ukraine uh for oh cool I yeah first ukraine. first five years of my life and what one thing that i noticed is um I, when the conflict initially started there i was trying to figure out what was going on and uh western media versus like russian television versus like all these different uh media outlets were broadcasting very different things and then all of a sudden it was like uh there was just they decided to stop covering it it was difficult to find information on the ground um of what was happening and it's a conflict that's still going on today and there's just not a lot of information going out of there and I felt, I personally, I don't know, I'm not smart enough to figure out what it is, but it felt like there was an agenda and 
you know, there was um, something going on uh, with people in a region that I cared about. And, uh, you know, I was um, looking at posts from people that I knew from Ukraine talking about like how their businesses were disrupted or um, how they're moving, asking for support and stuff like that. And it was just kind of getting blown over by, um, you know, like a bigger agenda. Um, and it felt like they were like, it, one of the biggest issues I have with media in general today is telling people what to think. And, and that's what I feel like a large, mm. large portion of it is. Um, and I, yeah, I don't subscribe to, um, there's this interest or this weird, uh, polarization that's happened uh as people kind of like go in this in the united states go to their separate uh uh little echo chambers when it comes to media uh as far as like is it cnn or is it fox news and mm -hmm. so there's been this big movement of people on the right uh trying to shoot down the radical left which is really interesting because if you go back to when Obama was president, um, Fox news was doing the exact same stuff that they're accusing the radical oh, yeah. left. And this is what I always say, right? So the fucking right wingers always got one about SJW crybaby, which I'm against. I hate all that bullshit. You know, like, I guess technically I would be considered a leftist, you know, I would be considered a radical leftist by someone at Fox news, but I don't really class myself as, anything any ism particularly i have my own ideas and that's it but um they always go on about sjw and crybaby they're the biggest fucking crybabies of all you know they're the biggest crybabies as soon as someone deviates very slightly from what they want you to believe they start screaming you know oh this is a communist thing this is fucking da -da -da. how dare you say that it's like hang on what weren't you guys fucking talking about free speech two minutes ago now you're <laughs> fucking crying you know it's, it's pathetic it's pathetic man I, I, with Popular Front, I said as well, like, we're not interested in that woke shit either. Like, I'm not having that. I'm not having language policing. Obviously, there is no fucking, we're strictly anti-racist, anti-fascist. I'm not having any of that bullshit anywhere in my platform. That's just a personal thing. You know, I think you want to be racist, you can get slapped around the face. That's how I feel. That's my personal opinion. If you don't like it, go fuck yourself. I don't care. But I'm not having woke bullshit leak into it because woke politics woke id poll is nothing to do with leftism is nothing to do with anything really about apart from power you know i mean mark fisher said it right in exit in the vampire castle it's a way for people that have not experienced true struggle often to gain a foothold or power within a movement right so you might be some indonesian kid but you're rich as fuck your whole family are rich and then suddenly you know you can then have power over some like working class blue collar guy that has no money specifically because of the identity. That's just not right, man. <laughs> you know, we, we, let's, let's build people up. Let's help people not be as poor and let, let's stop like corporations digging people out and like working them to the bone for fuck all. I'm not interested. If, if that's what you want to do politically, I think that's what's important. But I'm not interested in having any of that leak into popular front because it's so boring, man. Like Vice has done it so badly. It went from like hardcore war reporting to being known for just like, oh, everything is offensive. Here's why you shouldn't say this. Here's why you shouldn't say that. I'm so sick of the media telling you what to think, what is good, what isn't good, what is bad. Now, there are some things that are objectively bad. ISIS, bad. You know what I mean? Nazis, they're bad. But we don't need that to seep into the tiniest thing all the time. You know, it's just boring. So... I don't know. I try and keep it away from popular front. I mean, it's impossible to 100% remove politics from, from uh, conflict. I mean, I'm not, I'm actually not trying to remove it. I think I'm honest about my biases and I think that's all you can do. The idea of a 100% objective journalist is just, is just not real that you're not a robot. You know what I'm saying? And I think that if you are like that kind of journalist, fair play to you, but I believe that you have to be feeling things and, you know, sometimes even like allowing those to, um, uh, I don't want to say dictate, but like allow them to at least let you approach a story from a different angle because of what you've seen. You know, you shouldn't just be like, well, it's terrible that that group did that. And it's bad that that group did that. Well, you might be like, well, yeah, two things are bad at the same time. 
But then the nuance is, well, I get why that one did that because they did that. Now, that doesn't mean I'm on their side. It doesn't mean it's good or bad. I'm just saying like there is more nuance to what happens. Now, I believe that you should accept that sometimes as a human, you know, you are going to have these biases and be honest about them. But a lot of the time, you know, some people say that's bias. I'm like, is it bias or is it just not what you want to hear? At the moment, we're covering a lot of the uh, Armenia-Azerbaijan clashes on the on the Instagram right now. Um, I'm maybe going out there. I don't know. I'm looking at I'm I'm looking at how it's going to look with my other workload, but possibly I'm going to go there. But right now, we're kind of doing it from afar, and a lot of people will be like, "Oh, this is bias. Like, why is it bias? Azerbaijan kills two kids. This is bias. What is bias about that? Like, I'm telling you what fucking happened. You know, this is terrible. They've just bombed a church." Oh, that's bias. No, it's not. Like it's it's objectively true that it's terrible to bomb a church as it is to bomb a mosque, as it is to bomb a synagogue. Like it's just not good. You know what I'm saying? So I think we we remove the kind of psychopathic news line from things and just go like, hey, we're human beings, we're normal people, we're also reporters. Here's what's going on. And a lot of people don't quite get it. They don't understand that actually this is good reporting that a lot of journalists historically have done because they're so wired into partisan bullshit of Fox and CNN and it's just tiring, man. And it's like, look, we do things the way we do it. If you don't like it, fuck off. Like, you don't have to involve, be involved with it. You know what I'm saying? So I think there is part of um, the audience that enjoy that. I think a large majority of our followers and supporters like that. That it's like, hey, this is not for everyone. And we're not trying to be, you know? Like, I think with Vice, what they did wrong was go like, wow, like, woke bullshit is very popular now. Now let's focus a lot of our uh, content to that. What they should have done was been like, you know, this is a passing phase. We're we're journalists. We'll sure we'll talk about it. You know, I think trans rights are very important. I think gay rights are very important. Black lives matter 100 percent behind it. And at the same time, like that is not gonna then become my full focus. We do war reporting and that's that. You don't need me to then pander to some kind of agenda elsewhere because it's it's just not relevant. Often it's just not relevant, you know. Um, and political circle jerks will tell you that it is relevant and they'll try and tie you in knots and they really want you to understand. Like there's a lot of people that like me and like popular front that will message me and be like, man, I just wish you cared about this. And I'm just like, how fucking arrogant are you? You know, basically you can't accept something, enjoy it as it is. You want that thing to then also believe what you believe to make it acceptable to you. I think that's huge arrogance. And I actually think it's a way to control people the same way a government would or the people they're claiming they don't like would, you know? So it's all a bull, it's all a load of bullshit. And I think the best thing to do is write it out. This is going to die off. What we can do is be honest, be truthful within ourselves. You know, like I said, admit if you have a bias, say it, don't hide it. Um, and yeah, man, like, you know, it's, it is what it is. It's people like what we're doing. I, I will die on the hill that we're, doing true reporting, you know, this 100%, this is not propaganda, this is definitely not activism. Without a doubt, we will never do activism. This is what a lot of, you know, we have a lot of radical leftists follow Pop Yeda Front for whatever reason. And that's cool, I don't mind, like, great. But then a lot of them be like, why aren't you taking this stance on this war? And I'm like, what the fuck do I care what your fucking political circle jerk stance is? I'm on about reality. Like a lot of people like, oh, you seem kind of anti-Russia, but now all of a sudden you, you know, you're pointing out a lot of what's going on in Armenia. What? So then because atrocities are happening in Armenia, Azerbaijan attacked them first. Now, because you said you have to be against Russia. Now I'm not allowed to then suddenly say, look what is happening. It's really bad. Fuck out of here. Like it's boring. That is so stupid. And it's just typical Western chauvinism, Western exceptionalism. You know, um, oh, this war has to fit into my idea was here in safety in the West. Otherwise, I can't get behind it. No one asked you to, you know, no one asked you to. Let us do our job and you can go back to the book club or whatever the fuck it is they do, you know. Um, and the right wingers are just, I mean, I don't even pay them too much attention because they're just fucking, often they're just like, oh, why have you got a problem with fascists? <laughs> you know, like, why do you think, <laughs> you know, so it, it's, I don't know. There's a lot of like aggression going on within our community towards that. But I think that's just the community. I don't think that represents the work, you know, like look at the work we do. It's very detailed. It's very niche. We go into great detail. Our work is taught in universities all over America. Like we're part of courses all over the world where they're saying you must listen to this episode of Popular Front. You must watch this Popular Front documentary. Um, so that's what I care about, you know, like people learning stuff and educating themselves on what's going on in the world. 
um, being entertained at the same time. And I think what we do is very entertaining because, unfortunately, the world we live in, if you want the youth, the younger audience to understand war, show them how mad it is. You know, we get a lot of criticism for that. I don't care. I really don't care. You know, you for, for a minute of like, oh, there's music there and he's making war look like a game. We're not like, just watch the full thing. Excuse me, listen to the full thing. And you will see that it's just not true. <laughs> you know what I mean? But people just want to base their assumptions on like one second of whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm rambling, but I think essentially, yeah, if you've got a vision and you think you're doing the right thing, you have to just kind of sweep all the rest out of the way. Um, you know, they've tried to cancel Popular Front several times and it's like, I'm just like, I don't care, man. Like, it just doesn't work. I think when you withdraw the power from them by just saying, cool, whatever. <laughs> like, you know, I think that really helps. Um, but yeah, man. Yeah, that's uh, that's how it's going, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, well, the way that you go about getting your funding makes you almost uncancelable. Uncancelable. So that's pretty awesome. But yeah, I have, I have well, a lot. I'm of- not like, I, I, I'm not a racist and I'm not a fucking like sex freak rapist guy or anything or a pedo so outside of that it's like what are you gonna do like oh jake told an edgy joke (sighs) fuck off like who cares you know like who cares about that so you know whatever yeah um yeah i definitely think that there's a major demand for the type of work that you're doing um and because whatever the, the mainstream uh, agenda is a lot of a lot of countries out there have state run uh, news which is just going to back up whatever mm. the uh, politicians do and so social media has been a really good platform uh, in a lot of these countries to uh, challenge that um, agenda whatever is put forth and it's interesting it, it, it it's really cool to hear you talk about the sponsors and, and how much uh, the sponsors uh, have power over the agenda as well. Um, but yeah, we uh, have a rule with our sponsors, right? So, so we do, sorry to cut you in, but I just want to no. shout out to them because um, we have a rule, like we don't fucking accept money from anyone, you know, like a lot of like Jewel tried to sponsor me, which is ironic. I'm using one because I'm a crackhead, <laughs> <laughs> but, but like, you know, I'm not that again, that's a, you know, I don't, it's bad, but I recognize it's bad. Like Philip Morris is got a big stake in Jewel. They gave half the world fucking cancer by getting everybody hooked on cigarettes. So I was like, no, nah, I'm not having them sponsor me. Fuck them. You know what I mean? Who gives a fuck about Jewel? You know, we turned down a lot of money from them. We've turned down money from like fucking mattress companies because I'm like, what does that got to do with popular front? Nothing. You know, it would just be weird. So we only have like independents and businesses that don't fuck up their workers. So we have a few coffee shops independently run, check them out. They all treat their workers well. They don't fuck their workers. They're not like um, owned by a big franchise. That's good for me. I like coffee. I love coffee. It keeps me going. Yeah, it works. We have um, a company that makes uh, propaganda posters. So like Propagandopolis, you know, they basically have a website showing information about war propaganda from across the world, from across history, not political, just like, hey, here's a very cool poster that they used in Ecuador or wherever. And, you know, I know him. He's one guy on his own. Very good lad. All independent. Yeah, cool. He sponsors Popular Front. So I don't, yeah, we have sponsors, but there's a way of having sponsors without them doing anything. You know, we have it on my terms. They're like, hey, you want to sponsor it? We charge very little for our sponsorship compared to what we could because of the reach we now have. But we still do that. I think it's fair. We're being fair. And it, actually what it does is creates nice relationships. It creates better work, better working environment. You know, I want any, I'm not one of these guys that's like, fuck work. Like, that's some bullshit. I'm like, no, work hard work very hard you must work hard but you must be repaid properly you must be treated equally you must be treated well and you must get what you deserve for doing the work you know so i feel like what we're doing not only with the war report in and and all that with the kind of business side of things we're creating a more fairer i guess um template you know like i just feel like we're doing that nice man and all the sponsors we check out we're good they never ask me anything like, hey, can you do this for me? Like one thing we'll never do is paid sponsorship on the Instagram. Nope, I'm not posting anything just because you want us to. If I like it, we'll share it. So I think, again, that creates trust with your audience. They know anything we're sharing is because we're like, hey, we, this is a part of us. We like it. A good example of that is um, we had a guy 
you know, a guy that I knew was selling these like customized Baofeng radios and he ended up ripping a load of people off. Like I knew this guy for a long time. I didn't expect him to do this. So I was disgusted by it and we didn't have to, but we, we had directed them to, you know, we directed a lot of people to them and he got a lot of sales for us. So we started paying people back out of my own fucking pocket. You know, like I said, Hey, if you've been scammed and you can't afford to take the hit, hit me up. I'll give you the money back. Even though it was nothing to do with me, the sales weren't me. It's like, I felt bad about that. And actually very few people hit me up. A lot of people messaged me to say I was scammed, but I appreciate it. I don't need the money. And I was like, that's really nice. You know, like you, I think if you, and a lot of people did actually, well, a fair few said, Hey, I need the money back. And I paid them back and completely like what I could. Um, and I think that's nice. It really showed me that like, yeah, there are a lot of good people out there. You, you know, just because you have like some corporate kind of mechanism and loads of people buy into it doesn't mean they don't actually want something else. You know, I would much rather, a, I don't know, like an ethical Amazon where, you know, the, I mean, in Amazon in my country, in Britain, the Bezos treats the workers like fucking shit, you know, like, and I, I hate that. So I just feel like if I'm going to be honest, if you want integrity, just keep the popular front ethos throughout everything we're doing, you know? Um, and I, I like it that way. It makes me sleep well at night, <laughs> you know, well, I don't sleep well, but it helps me sleep. I don't feel like I'm fucking anyone over and I don't feel like I'm being fucked over. And I think that mutual respect through business, through journalism, it's nice. It's good. And I, and I, I've noticed other people, like a lot of up and comers, young journalists, uh, are taking the ethos and using it themselves. They're doing things themselves, doing the same way that we do it. And they've even said to me, Hey man, like I, I like the way popular front do it. I'm doing it like this now. And they're doing great and they're creating their own communities. And I think that's the way forward, man. Like if we can create something where everything's a little bit fairer and a little bit more honest, that's mission accomplished, man. You know what I mean? As well as bringing attention to these terrible wars that are happening all over the world. Um, you know, that's your duty, I think. So I'm, I'm happy with it so far. You know, it's, it's, going, it's going nice. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, where, where are some good places that people can find your work? Um, so if you want to check me out, my website, so jakehanrahan.com, that's Jake, J-A-K-E, and then Hanrahan, H-A-N-R-A-H-A-N. That's all my work. You can see what I did before. I've been doing conflict journalism for seven years now. Um, and then if you want to see Popular Front, popularfront.co, all our stuff is there. The Instagram is at popular.front um youtube definitely we got a very very special documentary coming out soon next month on the youtube it's going to blow everyone's head off i think so youtube.com slash popular front subscribe there and if you want to see a preview of that doc i just mentioned sign up for the cadro uh cadro um tier on our patreon patreon.com slash popular front yeah man that's everything there um and again what i want to say just to finish off like a lot of people message me and say i like what you're doing I don't always agree with what you think or say, but I like what you're doing now. You, it's a weird thing to say to me. We are not meant to always agree. That would be fucking bonkers. That would be so strange if we all agreed on everything, right? That's a cult. So, sorry. So it's like, there's no need to say that. That's good, man. We're not meant to agree. We're, not, we're meant to find the common ground, right? That's the name, Popular Front. A Popular Front is where a group of people... You know, they might have some differences, but they have one thing they all agree on and they work towards that goal. You know, in the start, the joke was it's uh, the popular front for the liberation of independent journalism. And the idea was like, we're all together and we all have this idea and, you know, we do that. Let You know, as long as no one's a fucking Nazi or a tanky or anything like that, our differences don't matter so much, right? Um, so, yeah, I like that. We don't need to always agree, um, but we, we can all work together for the same thing. Yeah, well, I sound like a fucking preacher now, <laughs> but you get my idea. Well, I, I feel like it's important to, in some regard, be preaching this day, these day, this day and age because so many people just don't have any sort of media literacy. Um, yeah, and, unfortunately. Or yeah, and that's a big part of what I'm trying to do too with my podcast is give people financial mm. literacy because these are things that aren't taught and I think they're intentionally not taught, but yeah. Well, anyways, really appreciate you coming on and uh, yeah, I look forward to the documentary coming out. You just recently did a really good one on uh, Belarus. Um, mm, and yeah, Luke Pierce, did that. he filmed for me out there. Excellent work. Yeah. Really good, yeah. man. 
Thank you and for having me on, man. Um, sorry I couldn't do longer, man. I've got a dash. Yeah, no worries. And anybody that's on the edge of, uh, you know, checking him out, uh, Jake is always on, um, is one of the first people to be reporting on these different conflicts. Uh, he's always got this stuff. Um, he was talking about Armenia and Ebert. Azerbaijan uh, way before it got picked up by I don't even know if it's yeah, been picked three, up three yeah. years ago yep three yep. years ago we did our first podcast about Nagorno-Karabakh I've been trying to go there since 2014 so yeah man we had a rise in that there's a big thing I would say as well just before we go like I'd say Popular Front is about like niche details of warfare modern war you won't hear about in the news but also we're about wars you won't see in the news mm-hmm. in fact next year we're going to try and do a whole series a documentary series um, we're going to call it Bad Signal. We want to do like a whole series, basically go into wars that you will not see on the news. You won't see them on Fox. You won't see them on CNN, fucking anywhere. They barely get any attention, yet they're raging. People are dying. There are wars like that happening right now. So, yeah, we will, I think we're definitely a place where you won't hear about a lot of the wars, but you will hear about it at Popular Front, and you will hear about it in detail all the time as well. Yeah. Well, stay safe, Jake. <laughs> That was a really fun interview, and I felt like Jake really presented some pretty valuable information as he just has a inside perspective on the world of journalism and is doing something to try and improve it. I really enjoy his work, and uh, I'm going to continue to support him on Patreon and follow him. We definitely have differing perspectives, but that is something that's beautiful, is to be able to discuss that the world is not black and white and has a lot of nuance and I feel like if you're an honest journalist like he is you see a lot more of how nuanced everything is Uh, so I really admire him in that regard if you want to support the work that I'm doing with the podcast uh, or Tucson blockchain you one of the best ways to do it is just to subscribe and leave a review, uh, comment, uh, send me feedback, you know, send people my way that you think would be interesting. Uh, really trying to just provide resources to people that normally wouldn't have them. And, you know, Jake's a great example that school isn't the end all be all. He is self taught, really grinded it out. And that's something I really appreciate about him uh but yeah uh you can also go to my website tucsonblockchain.com and send me some bitcoin and uh what i do with that bitcoin is uh try and uh further the adoption of bitcoin in tucson as a better form of money uh everything that i get goes to back into the company or to the community because I just think it's so important. Thanks for stopping by.